Hi, this is Presh Talwalkar. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how 0.9 repeating is not equal to 1 in a number system known as the surreal numbers. Now you've probably heard that 0.9 repeating is equal to 1, and you've probably seen some very convincing proofs of it. And what you've learned in school is actually true. It's true for the numbers we commonly use called the real numbers. These are the numbers that include zero, the positive numbers, the negative numbers, fractions, and the irrationals. And together, all of these numbers make up the familiar number line. But to explain how 0.9 repeating is not equal to 1, we're going to have to go into the details of what exactly a real number is and how we can build up the real numbers from a set theoretic construction. So we're going to start out by building up the real numbers in a set theory manner. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build up zero and the positive numbers. The process works. It starts out just from the empty set. So originally we just have one object and the set contains nothing. And we're going to label this set as the number zero. Now that we have the number zero, we can define a new number as being equal to the set that contains the object zero, and we're going to say that this is the number one. We're going to continue the process and put a set that contains the number one inside of it and call it two. So with this process, we can inductively build up all of the positive numbers by saying the new number n is equal to the set of the previous number n minus 1. Now we have to build up the negative numbers, and we can do that by writing it as a pair of two positive numbers. So the positive numbers we already know, we can define as the pair of the positive number comma 0. To define the negative numbers, we're going to flip that. So negative 1 will be 0 comma 1, negative 2 will be 0 comma 2, and so on. So in this way we can take the positive numbers and build up all the negative numbers. To build up the fractions, or all the rationals, we're going to have another ordered pair of any of the integers we've just built. So the fraction 1 half we can write out as the ordered pair of the number 1 and the number 2. Finally, we can complete the real numbers by defining the irrationals. And this is a bit complicated, but let me just tell you, you can define numbers like negative square root of 2 from the sets we've already built up. And that's how you build up the real numbers. Now the reason I did all this is that it'll give you a sense of how we build up the surreal numbers. So we also build them up from sets. But the first set we have, it's not just simply an empty set. It's going to be an empty set that has a left and a right side. The empty set we're going to define as the number zero. But now the sets we're going to use have a left and a right side. So now we can build up two more numbers, once we have the number zero, by putting a zero on the left side or putting a zero on the right side of the divider. We can define the first number as one and we're going to define the other number as negative one. And the surreal numbers are built up in this manner where each time we're going to take one of the numbers we built up and we're going to see what happens when we put that number on the left side or the right side or some combination of numbers we've already built up. So the surreal numbers are actually built up by a branching process. We start out with zero, then we build the numbers negative one and one, and each of those numbers can branch out to build different numbers of their own. Once we have these new numbers, we branch out and build out new numbers and eventually, if we keep branching out infinitely many times, we're going to generate all of the real numbers, all of the fractions, all of the irrationals, etc., 
all of the positive and negative numbers. So that's how the surreal numbers are built up. But what's interesting about the surreal numbers is that we end up on the infinite branch, branching process, we end up with some weird numbers. So let me write out a number for you. Let's say we have a set where on the left side, we just have the number zero. And on the right side, we have one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, and so on. Each time we divide by two, one sixteenth, and so on. And this list continues infinitely. So this is a valid surreal number. And this number, by the way the surreal numbers are defined, is going to be a positive number that's greater than zero, but smaller than any other positive number. And this number we'll write out as epsilon. And you can think about this number as being one divided by infinity, because this number is basically the number that's greater than zero, but it's smaller than all other positive numbers. So you can think about it as maybe 0, 0.0 repeating with the one at the end. We can continue. There's another weird number we can write out where we have a zero, one half, three fourths, seven eighths, and so on on the left side. Each time, uh, you know, we would have 15, 16s, and so on. And on the right side, we have one. So this is another valid surreal number. And this number is going to be defined so that it's greater than every positive number that's less than one. But it's still less than one. And this number will exactly be one minus epsilon. And you can think about it as 0.9 repeating. So we've come up with a very weird number, 0.9 repeating, which is clearly not equal to one because one was equal to the set which just had zero on the left side. So we've come up with the number system where 0.9 repeating is not the same as one. I will end that the surreal numbers are pretty cool. It turns out that the surreal numbers can also be derived as values from a game called Hackenbush, where red and blue players alternately take turns and you can define values of the game depending on how the red and blue uh, sticks are placed. So what this means is that all of life is numbers and all of numbers are simply a game and therefore all of life is a game. I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to my channel. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions on Twitter at Presh Talwalker or get my books at Amazon.